Welcome to OTB Boxing Class One on One. New students, subscribe on your way in. Old students, hit that like button on your way out. We got fight film. We gonna make sure we get them out to y'all a lot sooner. But uh, we got Sebastian Fundor facing off against Erickson Lubin, super welterweight division. Sebastian Fundor, 6'5", 20 and no, with um an 80 inch arm reach. Erickson Lubin, 5'9", 74 and a half arm inch arm reach. Erickson Lubin now has six straight wins since his loss to Jamal Charlo. Four of those by way of knockout, and I think this one going to end the same way. Let me show you why. Now, we're going to start off, man, looking at how Sebastian Fundora lean over a lot. He fight down to his weight, but he got a high punch output and horrible weight transition, which most fighters do. Look at him eat that right with a lot of um that has a high punch volume because you lose defensive purpose normally after two or three punches. And he throws close to 80 punches around. But he'll take those to land some, and I don't think that he'll be able to take these right hands that um, Hammer Time going to throw. So I think that we really going to put some respect on Hammer Time name after this fight. But uh, look at how he leans in. Don't really get his head on the shoulder while he close. Eats those two, three straight punches because he don't really understand the line. And all he, wanted, all he does when he can't maintain the distance is back up. But we're going to look at him fight from distance a little bit later. And um, with such a high punch output, he don't really have a great jab or he or great head movement. But he uses his jab enough to sneak in that right hand, as you can see him just laying that uppercut right there, laying two more straight jabs. Nothing really on those jabs, but he uses it to set up that right hand. And, um, and. And because he's so long and he uses that jab, you never know. I believe that he gets credit for a lot of punches that he don't really land. But he's he's so long and he don't really understand the line, as you can see. And that's why he gets that's why he gets hits with so many right hands. And I really think that that him trying to manipulate the line, not with the active jab, but with a subtle jab, will allow um, Erickson Lubin to time him. But in this clip, we're going to look at him fight from distance. And when he does fight from distance, look at him pivot away from the um, from the right hand when the kid puts the pressure on because he's been getting hit with them motherfuckers out in this whole fight. So by this time, he started to pivot, which means that he has some boxing IQ or he has a trainer in this corner who um, understands and can make adjustments because now later on in this fight, when he does fight from distance, he does some great things. And like I say, man, he has a high punch output. And a lot of those punches aren't great jabs. He steps with his jab a lot. But because he uses it to throw two, three, four punch combinations a lot of times, then um, look at him use that jab. Look at him use the jab to set up another three, four punch combination. They're subtle. And when he does it, you can tell. Look at him manipulate the line and pivot away from that right hand when the kid puts some pressure on him again. But he has horrible weight transition in the pocket, and he doesn't from distance. Look at him from distance. Look at him shoot the hook and then shoot the uppercut once he is on the line. Pivot around, rotate clockwise, maintain his distance, check his distance, and then bang. Look at that, man. That's good boxing. And, and if he really does fight this fight and fight from distance and fight with his length and fight up under his length, then I really look forward to seeing how um, Hammer Time is going to close the distance without allowing that to have an impact on him. And when they are in close range, as you can see, I really think that Hammer Time going to put him on his back foot. Because look at him lunge out with that jab. That's timeable. Anytime you see a fighter step with his jab, man, you need to tell him to throw his punches on the heel of his foot. Because that's going to help you not step with your jab if you need to um, practice not stepping with your jab. But because his length is so long, he gets away with a lot of bad habits. Because he's 6'5", that 80-inch arm reach. Now, by now, look at him get his head off of each line. <clears throat> Excuse me. Look at him get his head on on each shoulder that time when he was close. That's how you know somebody in this in this corner was teaching him. But he rotates the wrong way into the 
into the right hand. See him come back now. Now he ain't going to get clockwise so I can see it. Because, um, I mean, for that left hand, then he goes counterclockwise as Southpaw fighters do. And we're going to be having two Southpaw fighters. Movement from Sebastian Fundora and footwork, but you'll see it in punch output because he'll set his punches up the same way. But look at Hammers. Look at how he comes back and how he counts back upstairs and jab because he knows he's on the line. But um, I've seen, we, we know, we've seen Hammer hurt before, so it can be a flash shot. And I really look forward to that check hook right there and seeing how he closed the distance. But look at him step with that jab and then sit on his back foot. This is what you don't want to see. I don't want to see him sitting on his back foot because you become subject to get hit with shots like that because his head movement isn't great but it is not often he doesn't have he doesn't use a lot of head movement and for a fighter with that much power who like to fight off his back foot and counter you because he realizes he has a lot of power I, I really don't want him to get caught up in that I want him to bring his A game because you're going to have to box and he really does have a high boxing IQ as we're going to look at later on in um, some of these clips but look at that look at him step with that jab now watch this this is what I love now he realizes he has the line. So when he so when the kid had the line, he regroups, get off the line, step outside, just so you know, so I can set you up for bang bang. That's pretty, man. That's boxing one on one right there. Because he manipulated that with his feet. And then right here, I want to look at him change the levels. And I think that that's gonna be big because that's a fighter who really um because Sebastian Fundor, we know, really like to manipulate not so much as with his with an active jab or with a snap jab, but he want to just um, manipulate you with it. And and I really think the hammer going to get up under that and that overhand left going gonna to put it going to put Sebastian Fundor to sleep. It's going to be pretty. We got to let up off of um, old hammer time. Y'all got to remember, man, this kid, 26 years old, he in the peak of his career. I look forward to him showing us that he's in the peak of his career. And uh, I look forward to seeing him get that fight. Y'all know what fight I'm talking about, too, because now everybody see he ain't a wolf. Everybody think I, I, I really wouldn't mind seeing that fight, seeing him run that back right now. But that's another subject, man. We got Terrence Crawford signing a two-fight deal with PBC. We got Errol Spence film about to drop. So like I said, man, class is dismissed. New students, subscribe on your way in or out. Old students, hit that like button, and we're going to keep them coming for y'all.